And we're back now with day three of Where in the World is Matt Lauer in the magical nation of Laos in Southeast Asia. Most Americans have probably heard of the Mekong River because, of course, they were paying attention during the Vietnam War. It flows through six southeastern Asian countries, but its bountiful waters flow through more of Laos than any other nation, and that's why this country is often called the jewel of the Mekong. NBC's Peter Alexander has traveled with us here to Laos, and he also had a chance to travel down the Mekong, which had to be quite an experience. Yeah, it was quite a trip. No indoor plumbing. You can say that much for <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. But it was remarkable. I mean, you really can't overstate the importance of the Mekong River to what is a landlocked nation in Laos. Two-thirds of the population here either lives along the Mekong or along one of its tributaries. And to experience what a lot of people here refer to as the real Laos, we took what was certainly a unique adventure. In Lao, Mekong means mother of water. And here, she provides for an entire nation as a source of food, faith, and tradition. We embarked on a two-day journey. Our tour guide, Sack, was born and raised along the Mekong. Wow. Okay, and I'll be done. You can see the water now, so now the Mekong River is very loaded. This is the dry season. The river is too shallow for any commercial ships. Instead, it's used mostly by what are essentially water taxis like this one that ferry visitors between the villages and cities that line the river's banks. Our first stop, what the locals call King's Island. This island used to be a retreat for the last king of Laos. Yes. yes. But you were saying not a lot of people will come here because they're afraid that it's inhabited by spirits. So people come to this temple to ask the spirits to protect them while they travel on the Mekong. Those Buddhist beliefs are celebrated along the Mekong, like at Paku, where limestone caves hold more than 4,000 carvings of the Buddha. But what people rely on most is the river's natural rewards. The Mekong itself means what to this country? The Mekong it means really it's, it's, it's the lifeblood of the country. You know, New Yorker Stephen Chapani moved here a decade ago and now heads the Mekong Tourism Development Project. He says the Lao refer to the Mekong as their breadbasket, providing both fish and fertile ground to grow crops. Now we go to the supermarket and there's rice and there's meat and there's fish and there's vegetables and who knows where it came from here. You wake up, you walk out of your house, you come down to the Mekong Riverbank, and that's it, that's your supermarket. Somebody. After nine hours on the river, we finally arrived. It's home for the night, huh? Yeah. This is a typical Lao village along the Mekong River. There are about 120 people who live here. They have a few generators, so there's some electricity, but really no running water. And even at this hour, the temperature is more than 80 degrees and the humidity more than 80 percent. And we are the first Western visitors ever to sleep here overnight. We sat down for a traditional Lao dinner. The sticky rice, yeah, sticky rice. eggs, uh, cucumber, and this is pork. And what's oh, that? And that's uh, like a inche. insects. Yeah. So it's pork and insects. Yes. Okay. Soon sep, the Lao say. Bon appetit. I'll sleep for tonight. This is where we sleep tonight? Yeah, yes. We so thank tonight. you. So you put the mattresses, and I imagine we need mosquito nets too? This is our suite for the night. Yeah. Yeah, sweet dreams, we say. <laughs> sweet dreams. The village's daily routine begins again at dawn. A rugged life, as we witnessed, relying both on one another and this mighty river. And to be fair for us, this really is, in a sense, roughing it, but you have a new appreciation for the Lao people who live so many of them along this river with right. no means of communication or transportation except for the river itself. I'd be honest, you didn't eat that bug, did you? Well, it's funny you ask that question. In Lao culture, it's actually impolite to yeah. eat all the food on your plate, so right. I thought that's didn't eat that bug, did you? I, I didn't eat that yeah. bug. We should get some props where they are. Do a little respect to our soundman, Mark Roberts. We have got a shot for you. He did eat the cicada. He suggested going back for seconds. Said it tasted, by, uh, by the way, like fried onions. But 
but then said he was full. <laughs> and he should be out of the infirmary shortly. We've got a doggy bag for you to take on the plane. Thanks. Like. And you get another story later. We're going to check in with you again. We do. Thanks Peter Alexander, us. thanks very much. When we come back, we're going to import or mark an important milestone. 100 days to go until the Olympic Games in Beijing. And we'll take you inside an active Buddhist temple here in Laos. But first, these messages.